Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Got no time what for dicking around at all. This is an emerge of fucking gency. I need one of these in a hurry. What this is is the uh, Fruk hangy bit. You put a magneto on here and uh, it hangs from, from there. You can hang it, but son of a diddly. They want like 150 Canadian pesos for that thing. Ah, uh, und there we go. Just gotta bifurcate this. Ça fit comme le grand OJ Simpson. We'll, we'll cut this and then we'll make this part here. I traced a line, now I've just gotta carve it out with the most dangerous tool in the shop. Be careful, she'll cut you right from stem to stern. This is where the magic happens. We're gonna turn foam into aluminium. Now I've added some sprues, runners, gates, molds, and other Byzantine technical artifacts uh, of which I have no idea. This is the lost foam casting process invented by a Canadian sculptor and first patented in 1956, used by General Motors, according to Wikipedia, in their 1986 Saturn, ill-fated Saturn uh, engine blocks. What happens is you pour molten aluminum into sand, wherein this is embedded, and this evaporates and leaves aluminum. We're gonna see if it works. This is my first kick at the cat, so, if it's as easy as people say, ah, oh crap, I already ruined it. If it's as easy as people say, it's gonna work. Now I have some very fine and also lovely high, well, it's pure silica sand. Mm -mm. More toxic, more better. There we go, smug as a bug in an earplug. Now we're gonna pack the crucible and we're not gonna use the 6160, uh, just extruded aluminum. I've been practicing with the uh, arc casting and this stuff doesn't cast for shit. The surface tension is no good. What you need is actual casting aluminum. It's got more silicon in it, and it's nucleation. It, see the grain structure is real, real fine. It's just way better. It's also got lower, uh, not coefficient of friction, surface tension, for God's sakes. Get in the fucking game. Focus, you fuck. So these are the way to go. Chunks of old alternators and bell housings and bell ends and all that sort of stuff on starters, you sickos. Now, we can heat this many ways, and I showed you with the carbon arc gouging rod, yada, yada, yada. For field expediency now, we're going to go oxyacetylene rosebud tip. That's a super, super hot flame, because the heat of the meat, the angle of the dangle, the mass of the acid, all plays a part. Frogmen in the water, by the cutting torches glow, fought to save the steel men from ah, certain death below. Don't be up. Did I turn that off? Why you no come? Okay, we got the reg set up. We're at 5 and 17 on a rosebud of about that size. Corn duct. Mmm, smoky. Have you never used... Oh, I should put some glasses on. Sorry. If... Oh, fuck. I gotta turn the fan on too. This is brutal. Have you ever, have you never seen a acetylene burning on its own? It's real smoky. Puts out these little smoky, yeah, probably just smoked on the lens. But they float in the air and they don't go away. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Now we're just gonna heat the living fuck Ray Oliver. Fucker. Uh, too close, too close. Trying hard not to clean it. Now you may ask yourself, how pray tell do we clean our tips? Well, my dear friends, I'm gonna show you. For the uninitiated, this may seem disturbing. Once you get the gist of her, it ain't that bad. What you gotta do, stick, stick a slightly smaller, uh, that's a little bit big, but whatever proboscis into the hole. Ouch! And what's likely happened is one of them or two of them has cloved up on account of having schmoo in there. Solidified schmegma. In a smelting accident. Okay, we're giving her all the acetylene she'll suffer. Fire. 
fucker. Uh, so there we go. It must be a bigger tip than I thought because uh, it needs 10 and 20. Oh, you fucker. Fuck me. Some welders in the crowd right now at this very moment are pissing their sides. I'm going to stay away from this thing because it seems like every time I get close, it pops. thing about this is you don't see any flame shooting out um, because the sand is so porous that they it's evaporating through the sand so we won't have any air entrapment I don't think There's a bit of dross in there still but uh, no big deal looks like it all stayed in there to be frank with you Shirley I forgot all about the dross now the hard part's done Oh, that's hot. Let's let this chill down. That reminds me, there's frosty brew in the fridge. And now here's the moment of truth, though I much prefer dry vermouth. And in the interim, while I was sipping beer, I done made myself a magnet um, holder as well. That's part of the thing. Okay. Oh, fuck. So close if at first you don't succeed might as well just quit and go play a video game once again for the second time we got the bowl packed right full of the good stuff we got our old friend terry the torch's big ugly cousin poppy mcpopperson Still hot. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now the bottom side, amazing detail. Check out the detail on, yeah. It's a perfect piece of foam, just like I wanted. The problem is, yeah, the, the top side. This is where it didn't go in. See these little bits here. Fuck, that's tough, man. Now this is interesting, on further review, you can see that the mold filled from this one and then started to fill up here, but solidified and then didn't weld together when I pushed it over and tried to get it to fill here. So it's this thin section that's killing us. Clearly, if we can't get thin, we're gonna go to have to get thick. 